Giannis is having the best playmaking season of his career and probably his best offensive season overall. His scoring has reached a new height, being the most efficient version of himself that we've ever seen, and it's unlocked an entirely new level for him as a passer. A big part of how effective he's been at continuously manipulating opposing defenses into having to overhelp onto him is due to that ridiculous ability to score virtually at will. When Giannis is getting downhill towards the basket or in the post, teams usually have no choice but to throw at least one extra defender at him, and sometimes more than that, and as a result, there's always going to be an open man somewhere on the floor, and then it's just up to Giannis to make the right read. This isn't something that's specifically unique to Giannis. Plenty of guys in the NBA are just simply too good to defend one-on-one -on -one in a lot of cases, and every team is going to send help in certain scenarios. In this video, I want to get into how Giannis has been able to leverage his otherworldly threat as a scorer to elevate Milwaukee's offense to new heights. Before we jump in, if you enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you considered leaving a like and subscribing because it really does help me out a ton. That being said, let's get into it. Giannis makes a lot of the basic reads that you expect him to make. The stuff where defenses send a second defender when he's posting up and Giannis can get it to shooters who are just one pass away. That's the simple stuff that he does, but it's consistently there because teams are almost always going to have to send help. Giannis commands help defense at one of the highest rates in the NBA, and from there, it's all about him capitalizing on the advantage of forcing teams into defending the other four offensive players on the floor while having to play essentially down a man because they doubled Giannis. In their matchup against the Bulls, you can see that the Bulls are going to flood the paint whenever he's posting up and manages to get near the basket. You've got White, Caruso, and Vooch down there on him, and he's still going to be able to get the finish despite the tight coverage. On the next possession, they're going to run another post up for him, and this time, knowing it's going to trigger that extra help, he's going to be able to find Connaughton, and this is going to get the Bulls' defense into rotation, with the ball making its way around the horn, and then since Kobe White originally trapped Giannis on the post up, he's going to have to make a really hard closeout to the corner, and when Beverly drives on it, it's going to force Vooch to step up on him, creating an open dump off to Giannis, who can get the space for the finish. Now, if you rewind to the start of that possession, it all began with Giannis triggering that double team on the post up, and that's what got the defense into rotation in the first place. This play initially looks like it's going to be a handoff for Dame, but instead, Dame is going to turn it into a ball screen for Giannis to drive towards the low post, and Giannis knows that this is going to force Aldama and Williams to have to communicate either a switch or to stay on their man, and when they end up leaving two on the ball, that leaves Dame wide open up top. The Bucks are going to be trying to get two on the ball here, but the Grizzlies are just going to switch it instead. So Lopez pulls out to create space for Giannis, but Aldama is going to be hanging at the nail to provide help if Giannis decides to drive up the middle. Giannis drives right, and it's going to draw the dig off the strong side corner, as well as pull Aldama away from up top, and it leaves the open pass to Lopez and Giannis finds him for three. When Giannis has the ball, the defense shifts a lot of their attention towards Giannis, and specifically, Jemison is pulled in towards the middle of the paint, and he's kind of ignoring the weak side of the floor. Lopez flashes for Giannis, and with Williams having been pulled so far over near Giannis, it sets up for this handoff to allow Dame to attack the basket and catch Jemison flat-footed for the finish. Giannis and AJ Green are going to be running this two-man game, and the second that Giannis gets the ball back at the elbow and faces up towards the rim, three defenders are going to collapse, and from there, all he has to do is get it back to AJ Green, who is now wide open for the easy three. In transition, the Grizzlies are going to be so focused on stopping Giannis that Lamar Stevens doesn't even mark anybody, and with the back line of defense stuck with men in the corner, Giannis is going to sling the no-look pass to Portis down low. Again, the Grizzlies are going to swarm him in the post, with Aldama pulling up from the baseline, ignoring Portis and leaving the pass open for Giannis to find him. 
In the second half, we saw the Grizzlies start to second guess, putting multiple bodies on Giannis because of how many high percentage looks the Bucks were getting from it. But the issue with that is that Giannis was able to just get to the rim and get whatever he wanted. It's funny watching how good of a playmaker he's been this season because you look at how much help defense teams are throwing at him and you kind of sit there and ask yourself, do they actually need to send this much help? But then you look at his scoring this season and the answer is overwhelmingly yes. They absolutely do need to send that much help because he's been pretty much unstoppable as a scorer. And the idea of scoring gravity is something that gets brought up a lot. The concept that elite scorers are going to warp defenses towards them and pull them away from other guys. Giannis's gravity does a fantastic job of generating corner threes, which just happens to be one of the highest percentage looks in basketball. When Giannis is on the floor, the Bucks not only generate corner threes more frequently, but they also hit them at a higher rate. This comes as really no surprise considering how much help defenses are basically required to send help the second he gets going downhill. In the past, we've seen Giannis make relatively standard reads, stuff like drawing the weak side help defender and creating an open kick out to the corner. But this season, especially Giannis Antetokounmpo has become a much more versatile passer and creator for his teammates. He's making some very difficult passes. They're not all just quote unquote easy kickouts, drawing two defenders here, but Luca's blocking off a swing to Portis in the corner and the guys up top are all covered. So he's gonna dribble towards Powell and get the bounce pass around him along the baseline, making sure to get it to Crowder away from Luca so it can't get stolen. The Sixers are gonna send the double here and Giannis is gonna notice Lopez flashing to the middle of the paint with Lowry as the only guy under the basket to help. So Giannis is gonna pull out just a little bit so that his two defenders aren't able to go help before he feeds it to Lopez for the finish over the smaller defender. On this high pick and roll, Giannis is going to get the ball from Damian Lillard on the short roll, and the Knicks are going to collapse on him with Hart stepping up and Barrett sinking in, and Giannis looks at Portis, which kind of makes Brunson cautious of a potential pass down there, keeping his eyes away from the corner, and Giannis uses that misdirection to spray it out to the corner for three. He's gonna attack this closeout here and get into this spin move. And what this does is pull the defense away from the strong side corner and get the corner man ignoring the shooter. So with the defense fixated on him, he's gonna go up and sling it out to the corner to get Connaughton an easy look. The reason his passing has taken such a leap this season is probably due to that ridiculous efficiency that he's been exhibiting as a scorer. He's putting up nearly 31 points a night on absolutely ridiculous efficiency. Right now, he's the only player in NBA history to score 30 points per game on 60% shooting from the field. If all Giannis was doing was scoring, defenses could just build that defensive wall that we've seen them talk about with Giannis in the past. But when he's as good of a passer as he is now, then you can't really afford to give up those wide open kickouts all the time. And now it's just an added bonus that he's integrated such a versatile passing profile to his game. And for guys like Damian Lillard or Malik Beasley, they're gonna be reliable three-point shooters regardless of how perfectly they're being set up because they're just simply high level three point shooters. But the other guys on the roster that need a little bit more of some table setting, Giannis is making a massive difference with his passing. Bochamp shoots 45% from three with Giannis on the floor, 34% without. Bobby Portis shoots 40% with Giannis, 34% without. Andre Jackson Jr. shoots 39% with him, 35% without. If that doesn't scream making your teammates better, then I don't know what does. The passing and the scoring are very tightly intertwined too. And you can see that as his overall scoring efficiency has changed over the last five years or so, his assist value has fluctuated alongside it. And of course this year, he's creating more points off of his assists than ever before. And to Giannis's credit, He's always been an above average passer for his position, and I'm not saying we've never seen him make great passes before. He's been a good playmaker. It goes all the way back to when Jason Kidd originally tried running him at point guard in the first place way back in the day. But this season, I think we've seen the full culmination of Giannis's playmaking talent, and the results are speaking for themselves.
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd really appreciate it if you considered leaving a like and subscribing if you want to see more stuff like this. Shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel further, you can check out the Patreon link in the description. Also check out the latest episode of the Media Pass. We covered the Donovan Mitchell versus Devin Booker debate. It was a fantastic episode. Highly recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.